Thank you. What does bungee jumping have to do with mental health care? You're probably thinking not much, and you're probably right. Yet, in these minutes, I want to share with you how the two became connected for me. As a researcher, I normally study risky and delinquent behavior. And a couple of years ago, my research team and I wanted to understand how feelings like fear and excitement influence the way people perceive risk. And we figured that virtual reality or VR would be a great tool to make people feel excited or fearful. And in particular, we were thinking about bungee jumping. So this is me standing on one of the highest dams in Europe, ready to make my first bungee jump. The thing that you see sticking out of the helmet I'm wearing is a rig with a 360 degrees camera, ready to record the jump. And the idea is, of course, that you, as a participant in the research, will experience that jump yourself in VR and all the excitement and fear that comes with it. And here's, a, here's a taste of what that more or less looks like. So, for someone with, with mild fear of heights myself, this was not exactly easy, but it was very rewarding because it taught me firsthand that facing my fear is probably the best way to overcome it. Now, while I was doing the fun stuff, my partner was thinking about how to make mental health care more accessible to people. And um, she's also a psychology professor, and she's also a licensed therapist. So that probably gives you a rough idea of what we tend to talk about over dinner at night. And uh, it, was, it was during one of these talks that we had that we realized that my VR projects could actually contribute to her mission of making healthcare more accessible. Here's how. Many people suffer from fears that are so intense that they become debilitating. Fears like fear of heights, for example. For these people, just thinking about bungee jumping, even in VR, is probably already too much. Maybe standing on a balcony or going up an escalator is already too challenging for them. Such fears are called specific phobia. And besides fear of heights, you can think of fear of flying, fear of mice, fear of spiders, fear of small spaces. Now, people who suffer from a specific phobia they realize that their fear is excessive and unreasonable, but they're just unable to overcome it. Now, these phobias are very common. You probably know someone yourself who has experienced one uh, or more during his or her life. In fact, about 10% of all people suffer from one or more of these phobias in their lifetime. That makes them one of the most common mental disorders worldwide. Now, what's worse is that if you don't treat them, they may become chronic, or they may result in other disorders, maybe even more serious disorders, like depression. Now, the good news is that there is actually good treatment for this. We know a lot about it, and the, the way we treat it normally is by gradually exposing people with the object or the situation that they fear. We call that gradual exposure, and it's very effective. Now, already in the 1990s, pioneering researchers started experimenting with VR to expose people to the object of their fear, and to replace basically these real-life exposure situations. And their idea was that instead of having to, for instance, physically go up a building to practice, you could also put people on a building in VR. And the brain, they thought, would trick these people into perceiving the situation as real. And guess what? It turns out these pioneers were right. VR exposure therapy is as effective as exposure in the real world. Now, the problem still is that it's still very costly to treat people this way because it's time intensive and you need a therapist to do it. Now, of course, many people are also ashamed, embarrassed, or afraid to seek treatment. So many phobics do not get the treatment they actually need. But what if we can develop a treatment that people can do themselves from the comfort of their own homes and in their own time? During one of these dinner talks we had, we realized that this should be possible if we make clever use of existing technology. Technology that everyone here carries around with them in their pockets. What I'm referring to, of course, is your smartphone. Together with a cardboard box that costs 10 euros, that contains two lenses, you can convert your phone, you're probably familiar with it, into a very basic yet effective VR cardboard goggles. Now, with these two tools, and my recent bungee jumping experiences in mind, we set out developing a therapy for fear of heights. And we called it Xerophobia. 
For xerophobia, you don't need a therapist. You don't even need a computer. What you need is your smartphone, one of these cardboard boxes, some time, and a little dedication. A virtual therapist comes with the app, and she'll guide you through the entire process. And here she is. This is the exposure part. Now, exposure is not exactly the most fun thing you can think of if you fear the situation. So we've developed a game around it. And in the game, you don't only get to conquer your fear, but you also get to fix things and save kittens and find lost bikes. So it's engaging. It's engaging, but does it work? Well, as scientists, we felt it was necessary to come up with the proof, the empirical evidence that it's in fact effective. So together with VUE University in Amsterdam, over the past uh, year and a half, about 200 people participated in xerophobia. And we just got the results back, and they're very encouraging. People who participated, who followed the program, reported a significant drop in their fear levels. That means, basically, that you can get rid of your fear without having to get up from your couch. Now, we're dedicated to, to continue with this project. The, the, the mission is to help people worldwide get rid of their fears. And now that we have an effective therapy for fear of heights, we basically have the blueprint for treating other types of phobia as well. But that may only be the beginning. What about depression or burnout, which are very prevalent mental disorders in our society today? I think with the clever use, the clever and creative use of modern technology, we should be able to come up with treatment for these problems as well, at a fraction of the current cost of treatment. So evidence-based and affordable treatment that's accessible for everyone. That's the goal. Thank you.